he played uh, the famous Luke Danes. We've got Scott Patterson. Give him a big hand, guys. <laughs> All right, and also welcome to the stage. He played Michelle Gerard, our awesome concierge at the end. Give it a hand for Yannick Truesdale. <laughs> Right here is fine, anywhere is fine, yep. Away from Be her. comfortable. <laughs> he really is, Michelle. Hi, guys. <laughs> yes, it was me. Testing. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> yeah? Haven't seen so many people in two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, super exciting. Okay, so look guys, this is all about you. So I, you know, I'm gonna get things started, but I really wanna hear from you guys, okay? Because this is really about you guys and you know what questions that you have for Scott and Yannick, okay? So there's a microphone, if you haven't seen it, right over here uh, in this aisle. Please line up and I will definitely call on you to ask your question, okay? Don't be shy. If I, if I, if I can do this, you guys can do this, okay? <laughs> okay, we're all in it together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started. Um, so you guys were part of this, like, Gilmore Girls is just such a huge, iconic show. I, I know at least for me and my daughter, you know, it means a lot to us. What was it like to be a part of this show that means so much to so many people? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, this sh it's very... Uh, you do a show like that, you have no idea what it's going to be. It was my first job in L.A., and you do an audition and it's a pilot and you're like, oh, maybe the pilot's gonna get picked up and then it is. And then you're like, oh, maybe we picked up for 13 episodes. You're like, oh, that's fun. And then you're like, oh, picked up for the back six. And it's a really slow process and you, when you're in it, you appreciate every step of it, but you don't realize the impact of it until, really, I felt the impact of the show, the real impact of the show that it didn't go away and it wouldn't go away. Years after the show, I'm like, well, the show's been done for five years. People are still <laughs> talking about it. Um, but it's beautiful to be part of a show that was not cynical. It was a lot of heart. It's a feel good. And at a time where there's so much pain, uh, I'm really happy to be part of a show that makes people feel good. So, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Scott, how about you? Uh, I, I got uh, involved in it when I found out that, that Yannick was going to be in it. And I, I wasn't going to do it because I thought it was too schmaltzy. And then I decided, because of his participation, I signed a six-year deal. So not true. Uh, <laughs> no, I, um, let me see. The pilot, the process for me was a little different. Uh, I was just booked uh, as a guest star. Yeah, you weren't supposed to be in all no, of I the was episodes. Not, this yeah. was not supposed oh. to happen. Yeah. And um, so charismatic, they said we that, have to keep him. That's the thing, the magnetism, the, yeah. the wit yes. is what it was. <laughs> and, um, and then they offered two shows after the pilot was in the can. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they offered two. Wow. And that's I, a lot. And my, my, my manager called and said, we're not going to take two. I said, why? Come on, I need work. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. And then they came back at f with four shows, and she said no. And I go, you got to be kidding me. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. And uh, so she called, the manager called Gavin Pallone, who was uh, one of the, the executive producer of, of the show. Um, and she said, go to the network and get him a deal. You know you want him. You know the chemistry is good with Lauren. And let's just, you know, blank or get off the pot, right? And he did, to his credit. <laughs> and she called me and said, come to lunch at uh, this place. Uh, and she handed me a, a large envelope with a six-year deal in it, and it was a pretty good lunch. Wow. That was a wow. pretty good lunch. And That's the first great. thing I did was calculate how much that I was going to have to pay her in commissions over six years. So, no. <laughs> That's how my brain worked. That is so great. Well, we couldn't imagine the show without Luke. Right? Such an integral part. And yeah. Luke was supposed to be a girl. What? What? It was originally conceived I... as a woman. And the really? studio and the studio came back at Amy and said, change it to a guy. Michelle was supposed to be in his late fifties. Really? Yeah. Really? They couldn't find. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was a kid. I was 28. You yeah. were just a kid. I was 28. Oh you, were, yeah, you were just like, yeah. just like out of college or yeah, something. Right? Yeah. 
I was just out of graduate school. I was, you know, I was 23. <laughs> <laughs> I had socks older than that at that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, listen, it was, um, I knew, you know, the critics were, were uh, hailing the show from the get-go. When, yeah. when the Hollywood Reporter and Variety write reviews that strong, because you don't see that a lot, uh, then I knew we had something special. I, I knew it when I read the script anyway. When I read the script originally, before the first audition, I thought, I have no chance at this. You know, movie stars were crossing over into television. That's when it really started ha happening. So I figured they were just going to go after big names. But to her credit, Amy fought for what she considered to be the best people for each part. And I think that's what makes it really special. The casting, I think, is extraordinary in this show. 100%. It was really special. So many people... And yeah, Jared so Milo. Uh, right. um, it's just a ton yeah. of people to cast, and all with yeah. unique voices and yeah. unique characteristics and rhythms. It's a, a real accomplishment in casting and writing. Absolutely. Okay, I want to remind everyone, if you've got a question, please feel free to jump up to the mic. Jar Jar you have a question? Okay, jump right in. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. I can hear you. My question is to you, are you Team Jess, Team Dean, or Team <laughs> the, she's, she's asking the tough question. I tough know. question. You're right, sister. I'm Team Jess, too. <laughs> I am with you. Blood. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm friends with Jared, so I'm Team Jared. Team, uh, team Dean? What was his name? Dean? Dean. Yeah, but he yeah, was but not nice. What was wrong with Dean? Dean just couldn't handle Well, he was young. He was, was 12. A rival, oh, and on. he flipped Give out. Give him a break. I like Dean. Dean was Dean, nice. I, I, listen, I like him, too. He's a great kid, but and he's not a kid anymore, no, but yeah. I'll always see him as a kid. Yeah. Scott, how do I gain weight, man? I'm too skinny. How, he was skinny. He was skinny. I don't know how to do it. I, wanna, you know, I don't know how much. <laughs> Jared, listen, stay skinny. You're gonna He's thank not skinny me. anymore. What are you talking about? Yeah, he's yeah. like all buffed. And he's stuff. a tall drink of water, that boy. <laughs> That's a, he, he's never going to be like this. And he, I, when he was 18, he wanted to be like this. I said, dude, you're like 6'4", 130. How six, are you going to get... 6'6". Is he not 6'6"? Six, six? No, he's not 6'6". No. Six, six. He's 6'4". Mm. I measured him he's once. from Texas. <laughs> I measure. That's weird. I, I, just don't know. I, I don't like the visual of that. I don't tell you everything. You know, you get very jealous. Um, uh, so, but you know, that's that's Jared. But um, what was the question? I don't know. Detail. Which team? <laughs> team, team. Yes. <laughs> Tough questions. Hi. Have a question? Can someone help her? Hi. We hear you anyway. Uh, firstly, I wanted to say thank you. It was such a gift, right? Because we never get to go back to a world and a part that you created. Once you're done, you're done. It's the beauty of it, because we do all kinds of characters. Yeah. But this show was so meaningful to all of us. Yeah. And to have the chance to go back and revisit it, uh, and also to give fans new episodes, because God knows they were asking for it. <laughs> Yeah, so it was, and we all, we're all older and so appreciative of, of, uh, of the show and, and to see each other and to see the growth. And uh, it was lovely. I really, I almost liked the coming back more than the, I, the original. I, I enjoyed it much more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we never got to say goodbye. Also, It was yes. like I was on a set That's in true. Toronto and my manager texted me. They, they, they killed the show. And I was like, huh? Now I have to go do a scene uh, where I have to be happy. <laughs> How oh, am I going to do no. this? And uh, uh, it wasn't really 100% a surprise, to be honest with you, because I think you know, certain people were kind of uh, bankrupt. Uh, they had no gas in the tank. And it's, 
you know, it's a tough show to do. Yeah, it's a tough it's show. It's a tough show to do. If I don't got, know if people know, but we had an average of 30 pages more right. of dialogue right. per episode, right. but not more days to shoot it. And not more time to air it. So it's <laughs> yeah. 40 minutes of an hour and That's then 20 minutes uh, co commercial yeah. right time. And then you've got 80 pages of black ink. Yeah. So just like, whoa. That was because the dialogue was so fast. So fast. So yeah. Fast. I read so many articles about how yeah. you know, that 80 was like, okay, we got to do this again. We got to be fast. Yeah. And I thought that was just so very interesting. We really were able to get so much into that. But it didn't start fast like that. We, no. First season, if you watch the first season, and yeah, you guys you're have, right, you're right. the first season has a much different pace. And then suddenly, I don't know if Amy started doing coke or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she went like faster, faster, faster. I don't know where it came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was a thing. Yeah. And then it was our branding. You know, we, yeah. oh, Gilmore Girls, they talk so fast. So then we all talk, had to talk you never, fast. You, you never got an acting note. You just, the director would come up and faster. say, uh, can you go faster? Yeah. So, no, and you I couldn't can't. change a word. No. So that made oh, it tricky because, no. uh, yeah. yeah, you had to really had to know the lines. There's, there's a funny yeah. story. There's a there's an extra one day who came into the diner and he had one, two words. That's it. And he was all excited. And he was a young kid, and he try, he in rehearsal he came in and did some soliloquy because he wanted to improvise oh, oh. and impress people. Oh, no. And he was a really nice kid, but I, I, I took him on a little walk and I said, listen, guy, <laughs> <laughs> you're not, that's not gonna fly here no. in this part of Texas. So, uh, you know, just say the words and yeah. that's it. And we, you just can't, and, and when we started shooting, he did all the exposition he wanted and he got reamed by, I forget who the director was, but he got reamed and he was like, God, Damn it! How many times do you have to? You know, like, but some you. other shows welcome you. that, but that was not right. A, show other, like that. a lot of shows would be, oh, like, hey, that guy's great. Let's fire him and hire him. That yeah. was brilliant, yeah. but not on this show. No, no. Oh, thank you. Guys again so much. Oh, thank You're you. very welcome. Thank you. But, uh, but but it was nice to come back to something after nine years and know what your completion date was going to be. It was three and a half months. It was a ton of work, right? It was yeah. uh, four movies, basically, in three and a half months and four different seasons. So it was kind of crazy wardrobes. Like, you'd wear summer on the bottom, winter on top sometimes. i go, go change. Um, and we all got to sort of, you know, bathe in it again and say proper goodbyes. And just it was just really nice. I mean, Netflix spent a ton of money on those sets. Those sets were completely different. I mean, especially in... But they were destroyed, mainly. So right. They had to rebuild had everything. To rebuild. Yeah. 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 I mean, so Luke's diner always had, like, a, a kind of an old, squeaky kind of, like, tile thing. And the sound department would go crazy. So we'd have to do a lot of looping. And Netflix made it spongy, one inch, just nice. You could lay down on it. It was wonderful. <laughs> sound department loved it. It was a little weird at first, you know, cause it, but it was really nice on the back. <laughs> So you guys were talking about the fast-paced dialogue that was brought up. So I'm curious, who had the most trouble remembering their lines on set? That's a lot of lines. It was always guest stars. <laughs> because, and we would have yeah. some very, um, uh, we would have guests, you know, people that had Broadway resumes, people that were known uh, and extremely talented people, tons of experience, and they could not. So sometimes they couldn't do it. Yeah. They were terrified. I'll reverse your question. The person that learned her lines the fastest to me is right. Lauren. Right. She, wow. because she yeah. had so much dialogue that she didn't have the luxury of learning her lines ahead of time, like I did, or maybe right. you did. Right. So she, we would go on stage and block a scene. Blocking a scene means you just decide where you're going physically for the camera right. to follow you. Right. And she would have her pages in her hands reading during the blocking. And then I would see her in makeup. 
She'd still have the pages in her hands while she was getting makeup. And then we'd get on stage and we'd do it the first time, a bit rocky. Second time, right. uh, a bit better. Third time, no more pages. And like monologues, yeah. not like few lines. I was like, how is this possible? Like uh, her brain, she has a fo photographic memory. Is that what you say? Maybe. You say yeah. Almost, yeah. almost. Whatever. Not quite, but almost. Yeah. Uh, but very impressed by how quick she could learn. The first mind. season, they threw a scene at us right away. Speak you know, more yeah. on this. Uh, they threw a 10 pager at us yeah. at, yeah, they six, would do at that. 6 a.m. Yeah. And we, we had to be on set at seven, and Lauren and I looked at each other like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and we just did it. Yeah. And you just, it's amazing what you can do when you have to do it. When you have to, And yeah. she was in that situation every day. Right. And so it's a muscle that you develop, and it's short-term memory, and it's like all the junk goes out uh, the next day, and the new, make room for the new stuff, yeah. and, and, it, and it works. You develop that muscle, and then when you're away from the show for a while, you can't do it anymore. <laughs> It wasn't it unfair because we forgot see the thing is is when when Gilmore ended We forgot I forgot how hard it was to get a job in Hollywood To get a job? to get a job because oh. we had this job by miracle of all miracles We were chosen to be in the show and then after seven years we're back out auditioning again Yeah, and it's like I, I don't yeah. know about you, but I couldn't audition anymore I forgot how to do it to do it. Yeah, I even told a cast and I, this isn't really fair I've been busy like making shows and these guys are better than me in the room because they've been auditioning this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and I lost the ability to do this. Yeah. So it takes, it takes a while to get back into the auditioning mode. So it's weird. But now I went to Canada and I was doing shows without auditioning. So I didn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. But yes. Wow. Okay, just remember if you guys have any questions, um, feel free. Um, so I'm curious if there were any more episodes of Gilmore Girls. Yeah. What would you like to see happen? I, we were that. talking about it. We'd like to see zombies. And <laughs> we, we, we were just talking about this, and I think it's a great idea. Turn it into zombies. I was talking to these two young girls at the table, and they, they're Walking Dead fans, and I just thought, why not combine these worlds? It's such an original, unique idea. I think my thinking is right yeah. and very modern. Pitch it to Amy. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> He, he keeps blowing up my phone all the time. <laughs> I do a podcast. He was my that, that's first true. guest on, on my that's podcast. True. See how kind I am. Um, <laughs> we don't, <laughs> we don't keep, you can't keep in touch with everybody because it was a big cast. I think we were 12 or 30, I forgot how many people. Um, but obviously certain people, and strangely enough, all of my scene partners, I kept in touch with them because they were the people I was working with. So uh, Lauren and Melissa are close friends because that's all my time on Gilmore. Um, and Kelly Bishop, um, still very close to Kelly. I just spoke with her because she's a Pisces as well. So I, I, called her for, I called her for her birthday. And I said to her, in my head, I, ke I keep people in the time I met them. So I met Kelly, she was 58. So I said, for me, you're still 58. She said, well, add 20 years. I'm like, you're 78. She, yeah. yeah, but she's wow. so vibrant and full of energy. It's, it's, it's so great. Um, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Good question. Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so where do you think your characters are today in the Gilmore Girl world? What are they doing? What was happening in the Oh yeah, I got kids, probably depressed or something. <laughs> Cuz he hated kids so much. You, you got kids? Uh, yeah, in the episode uh, I was married or something and then yeah, I got kids. I or we we're going to What? Yeah, but I feel like in the <clears throat> revival we were I, we were adopting kids and I was right? Yeah. And I had a nervous breakdown. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so he's probably dealing with the kids and regretting every second of it. <laughs> today, yeah. So how old would Rory be today? She would be... What, in her 30s? 35? Yeah, no, not yeah. 35. No? She was 16. When She'd be 40 at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it's 20. That's right. Yeah. 16 plus 22. 20, 20, 38. 38. That's right. So she'd be 38. Uh, oh, gosh. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I think Luke is just, he's, uh, I think 
the beauty of, of that character is that he doesn't change and that he is the one touchstone uh, uh, maybe in the piece that really doesn't change and, and is resistant to any kind of change. And that's, yeah. that's half the appeal of it. So he's probably still the same. That's great. Go ahead. Uh. <laughs> Good question. Good question. I, I kind of would, I don't, I'm, I'd like to be a zombie. I'd like to be one of the zombies. I think Michelle would scare them. He'd just scream, just go, go crazy on them. I think it's a, with his French accent. You know, he'd be like, "Get away from here! <laughs> Get away!" <laughs> uh, and I'd, I'd throw him out of the diner. He's like, messing up the place. Oh, that's great. Go ahead. Hello. So I'm going to ask for a scene. There's uh, there for Gilmore or for anything? Oh, anything. Oh God, it, boy, it changes depends depending. Depends on the part. That's right. Depends on the piece. Yeah. For Gilmore, it was George Bell. George Bell was our dialogue coach. Yeah. And George Bell came season three. I can't. I don't he wasn't remember. there for the first two seasons. Then suddenly George Bell is there, and he's a trained theater actor, a very competent actor himself, and uh, he would come into the trailer and run lines. And you'd, you know, you'd know him cold. Uh, you, you you need to be bulletproof before you walk onto a set because yeah. so many things can happen. There's so many distractions. There's people walking behind camera. There's noises. There's all kinds of things. Um, so if you're not bulletproof, you're going to get thrown off. So you need to really be cold on your lines. Really know him dead cold. Uh, and that's the best advice I could I could give anybody. Uh, I used to prep. Prep, prep, prep for any part. I'm overly prepared as an actor because I want to be as relaxed as I can that's on stage, and that's my way to be relaxed. But as I'm getting older, um, <laughs> I'm doing a show currently in Canada, and the show was written for me, and the part was written for me. And for the first time in my life, I was like, okay, you're old enough. This is you, basically, the character. Uh, so for the first time, I only learned the lines and didn't do all of my prep. Mm. And I thought it was thrilling yeah. because you're so in the moment of like figuring out right. what is going to happen that it's kind of like now my new way of working, oh, you... learning the lines, but letting the magic happen on That's the very, spot. That's uh, very Stanislavski. Yeah, yeah, it's very fun, but it's very new. I it's, just started it's, doing it's that. It's called the quality of the first time. Yeah. So if you can capture that, even though you rehearsed, if, if you can, you know, Jimmy Kahn has a photographic memory. And he was really frustrated with a lot of his co-stars because they didn't have a photographic memory. They needed to rehearse a lot. He never needed to rehearse. He just looked at something once and he knew it called. He knew how he was going to do it. Um, so he was always having that quality of the first time experience. And that's what they, you know, all of the, uh, uh, the more erudite uh, acting uh, teachers and acting books tell you to strive for is the quality of the first time. Um, there you go. That, that's it. Thank you for the question. That's great. Great question. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, how did you prepare for those dancing scenes. <laughs> Me, Mich no, Michelle I did not. had some great, I did great not moves. Pre <laughs> this is because Amy <laughs> saw me at a Christmas party dancing, I think with Melissa, and then I showed up the following season and Michelle kept dancing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was great. Some of my favorite scenes. Yeah, that's, Mich that's because dancing. of that. Blame it on the Christmas party and the alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. So Scott, I'm curious, um, one thing that I wish, um, if there was anything I think that um, I would have asked for more from Gilmore Girls was to explore that relationship uh, between Luke and his father. Hmm. Do, you, do you know um, more about the relationship between Luke and his father? It sounds like it was a good relationship, but it may be complicated. Do you know, or have you just maybe kind of have that in your head? Well, your I mean, I mean, yeah, I thought about it. I didn't go into great detail about it, uh, but I, I did think about it. And, uh, 
you know, I kind of drew from my own experience with my own father because it was sort of hewed along the same lines. Um, but uh, delving more into it and the story, gosh, I don't know. Um, you know, I, 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 when I think about the show, I think about how many characters really got developed mm -hmm. in that way. And there weren't, really weren't that many. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, uh, Lorelai and Rory, and, I mean, they were developed. And I think, I, I think the Gilmores got developed because they always had characters coming in and out of their life. And I think the one time that they, they really tried to add some dimension to Luke is when April showed up. And, and, and the fans did not respond to that uh, the way I think the, uh, Amy and Dan uh, expected. So I think they, they, they ramped back on it and really never made another attempt. Uh, uh, the Jess thing worked, the April thing didn't, so. You know. I don't know if it's such a good idea um, to, to, to try to develop too many characters. I mean, I think the way that Amy and Dan intended the show was to really focus on those four people. All Gilmore, it's Gilmore girls. And I think the studio wanted to call it originally the Gilmore Way because they saw Emily and Richard as more of like, m also lead cast. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it, it, it went down. But there's just not enough time in a season to develop all those characters. So it's probably best to leave it alone, you know, and let the audience sort of imagine what it was like, right. or not even ask the questions to focus on what was going on on the screen. Right. Makes sense. Do you think we'll get any more? Well, any more Gilmore Girls? Any more revivals? I don't think so. Don't think so? I mean... I don't see the world in which, I don't know. It's been, when was the re revival? Five years ago? They better do, a, they better do new ones. 2016, <laughs> yeah. Because there's going to, their I don't know. Fa fans will storm Never the know. Port Collison. And say, I, yeah. I, I Listen, I have a podcast. I've done 80 episodes. I do a rewatch podcast on iHeart. 80? Oh and my we've God. done 80 episodes. Wow. Yeah. We're all, th we're through season two now. So. <laughs> what? For yeah. real? Yeah. Oh, every episode you're doing it. Okay, I see. Not every. We're doing oh. three episodes a week. So we'll, we'll break down an episode, and then we'll do, a pop we'll do a separate episode on the pop culture that was in the episode. Okay. Right? And then we'll do an interview with somebody, a guest cast. Jeez. Just had Adam Wiley. Yeah, You'll be dead by the time you're done with all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a full-time job. Yeah. So I think maybe with the... Someone. Generating new interest. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, Jess was supposed to have a spinoff when he was leaving the show where he wound up to be in that spinoff and getting inside information about that online or something. Jeff, uh, Jess did, did film something. Yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah. With, with, with Rob Estes played his father. Yeah. They filmed it down in Venice Beach. And it didn't, it didn't, didn't fly. Right. Yeah, it didn't get picked up. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I, I'd heard that um, the studio, I'd heard after season two or three that the studio wanted to spin off my character, and Amy said no. Which is probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm not like really anyone else here. I started watching about five years ago. Uh -huh. Feels like an AA meeting. Watched a seven season in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, pe people do that in a weekend. Really? People, they do that in a weekend. No, no. Okay. <laughs> well, how about sex? No. Thank I you. Don't know. Let's just say <laughs> newlywed. <sighs> All right. Sorry, kids. Go home. <laughs> 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 We're not stopping you. <laughs> what do you guys shut up up there, Jesus? So I really enjoy your life, except for the 
closure. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. We're cruel that way. You, you're, you're, if, if you want closure from Gilmore Girls, you are barking up the wrong tree. It's, it's intentional. We, we have not. <laughs> everybody, you know, everybody has sort of disparate, successful careers. You know, I mean, it's like, how are you going to schedule all of these these people? And I, I'm sure if, if if Netflix wanted to do, again, listen, next Netflix made a deal with Warner Brothers for the rights, okay? And and it, I think it goes through 2024, so it, it ain't over yet. I, I, say. I, I think there's I think there is always a ch for something that is so globally uh, admired and loved and has touched the lives of so many people so deeply uh, because this is not just a fan base this is a this is a religious cult uh, in the best possible sense and this is a way of life it's a religion and and by God, I always think that there's hope that it, Netflix could do it again if they make the right deal. Thank you. You got it, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, go ahead. Uh, hey, that was gonna be loud. Yeah, that doesn't work, by the way. Might as well just ask for my seat. Um, whenever you guys close down the show, um, was there anything that you guys took from the set? Like, you yeah. <laughs> I took so many uh, suits. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, but they oh. gave it to me. Really, Brenda said, just take well, it. Who else are you going to give it to? I know, but those suits are like a bit dated now. They were so, great yeah. suits. Yeah. Uh, great suits. I, I took uh, pretty much everything that wasn't nailed down <laughs> on a daily basis. Yeah. Did you have a favorite thing that you like, uh, of the, oh, this thing in particular, like, you know, the bank play or, or whatever? I got uh, a Luke. I did that. I got one of those. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. I have a storage facility, and <laughs> a third of it is Gilmore memorabilia. That's so I'm good. Uh, when, the Smithsonian, <laughs> when, when, when the Smithsonian calls, I'm going to get into negotiator mode. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, go ahead. I'm back. Yeah. Two small questions. How was it having Aunt Vivian as your mom? Uh, did you, oh, that's my mom. Yeah. Oh, it was, she, it was, she was there for one episode, right? Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I forgot about that. I'm trying to remember the episode now. It's too long she ago. She came in from Paris. What, yes. And didn't know anything about what you normally do. Right. <laughs> and you guys, and, and, oh, oh, and you guys were, uh, you know, were, were we talking in French? No, she didn't speak no, French, right? No, but it was a French accent. We're, yeah. And you're terrible. Oh, you're wicked. You're, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, fun. it was fun. Thank you for reminding great. me yeah. of that episode. I forgot about that. Yes. So my second question is, is Michael Wickers as a boy? No. No. He's a terrific no, guy. He's, so great. he's a gentle, yeah. gentle man. Uh, just a warm, gentle yes. guy. A, a consummate theater pro. Classically trained actor. He's doing Shakespeare and Chekhov all the time. Regionally and nationally, he's a brilliant guy. Yes. I know. Beautiful guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Hi. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the fun part. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you. Maybe I'm twisted. Uh, but I. It's there's there's a fantasy in that, and if we could live in a world where you could just speak your mind, especially now where people get canceled every two minutes for saying something wrong, uh, he and Michelle would be canceled in one second. <laughs> you can't, you can't um, yeah, Michelle. but yes, the joy of saying those lines, so many lines that were delicious, and in. <laughs> And to, like I remember, as the first season, uh, there was an elderly woman that came to the inn, and she said, "Excuse me, sir, do you know where I could find the best antiques?" And Michelle said, "Yes, at your house, I guess." <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. You know who says that? Uh, but <laughs> but what a pleasure! Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. Yeah. That was so good. Hey, go ahead. Oh, 
Oh, right. Oh my oh, God! That is, that's a oh. sick, that's a, twisted yeah, that, take. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Paris. Where did you read that? <laughs> oh, wow. really? That's funny. That's. Oh my God. <laughs> what if Tom Cruise did? I mean, um, I mean, based on that, I mean, anything is possible according to this person. Well, um, we kn- we know it's got to be one of the three. Yes, of course. It has to be. <laughs> I'm hoping it's Jess. Yeah. Is it Logan was the last? Uh, it's got to be Logan. Rory's not going from one guy to another guy. No, she's not. <laughs> but there is that thing where if she did go with Logan, yeah. she, maybe she felt so terrible about it, she immediately went to Jess out of, <laughs> out of guilt because she wanted uh, to have a really full experience with him. Right. I Sorry. Don't know. Yeah. Thank Not you. bad. Good question. Thank Doesn't you. Doesn't make her a trollop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Makes just, her a just human being. Just to be being. clear. Yes. <laughs> Hi, go ahead. I love this interaction. I'm going to keep Jess all the way. That question messed with my life, though. <laughs> 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 I mean, I've watched you guys season to season and seven episodes seven times. I never stopped having a time. Especially as a free teacher. And Scotty. There you go. You got it. You got it. And Michelle, thank you for being a tail wagger about Celine Dion. Thank you. My question would be if if you had to step out of Star Hollow and be your character to where else were you going? To go. Oh God! Oh. Paris for Michelle? No. Uh, I, yeah. I I think Luke would probably go. You know, he he'd want something rural and woodsy. I think he'd probably go to Montana or Wyoming, Jackson Hole or someplace, Teton Village or something. Well, he couldn't afford that, but <laughs> <laughs> he'd get a small ranch somewhere outside of Cheyenne. You know, maybe something like that. Fitting. Perfect. Hi. Go ahead. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, she did. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> what about me? Well, I, th- I think you want to keep, that's one of the main tensions of the show. So, uh, I mean, after the show ended, they probably had an idea that they would bring it back in some form, you know, um, and they want to maybe keep that as an option, you know, on the back burner there so they could exploit that down the road, you know. Okay. Okay. It, give, it gives them better, it gives the creators better negotiating stance when they want to bring it back. Say, so, well, you, 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 want, you want a wedding? It's going to cost you. <laughs> okay, last two. Go ahead. So, uh, my best friend Aubrey, is there no advice to you your past self, like before the show? Um, and then what advice would you give her now that she's The actor or the character? Uh, uh, the advice. Uh, be, I mean, be, I... Yeah, go ahead. Do you do for actor? No. Do for actor? The character? Yep. I mean, the, the, I, I would do it for myself. Like you're gonna do? You, you're gonna go there? Yeah. Ooh. Cause that's no, a trap. I don't know. She said a trap. <laughs> We're falling into it. <laughs> yeah, Your but friend, I would know for Aubrey. My... Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um. Okay. Uh, okay. 
I think, I mean, I, I have always been very, very appreciative uh, every time I have a job as an actor because I'm so aware that it's, uh, you know, it comes and goes and you can work and not work and you're trained, you know, like people want to hire you and suddenly they don't and you don't know why. And so dur I was going to say during that time, I would have said to Yannick um, to appreciate it. But there is not a time where I drove on the parking lot and I didn't say to myself, God, I'm lucky. God, I'm lucky. I've always kept it in mind. So I don't know. And uh, Michelle probably I would have tell him to relax. <laughs> 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 that not everything has to be perfect. It's <laughs> great. Uh, yeah. So we're doing both character I don't know. and person? Do, do I mean, you? now I, you, you set the bar. Now I got to. <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, OK, person. I don't know, just enjoy the journey more as a young person instead of being so driven. Okay, I think, I think a lot of people uh, with drive and ambition and work ethic uh, miss out on a lot of the glory of life because they are so focused on one goal. Um, and as far as Luke is concerned, um, gosh, I don't know. Uh, Make a move sooner with her, because he wasn't like. No. But no, I see. I, I don't think he should have made a move sooner. I, I have thought that, and then I realized why he doesn't. Um, and it's because that's a very small town, and they're friends, and he doesn't want to disrupt right. anything. It's just yeah. too fraught with. Yeah, yeah. You know, peril for him and his business and his personal life. So it, it's better to. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I guess, I don't know. He, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last, I have no idea. last question. Time for one more, and then we got to wrap. Can't speak intelligently about this <laughs> well, What is her new... Well, the fact that she's pregnant. The fact that oh, she's pregnant. Oh, yeah. Pregnant. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think that town is like her family, extended family. So everyone will jump in and help and love and you know nurture that child. I think that's yeah. Very, that's that's the question. How can she venture outside of Stars Hollow? Right. She's got to stay there. I mean, that's that is her family. That's her right. Family. In that way, yeah. Because yeah. she had a terrific upbringing. I mean, look at her. She's spectacular. In a lot of ways, she's far more mature than her own mother. She takes care of her mother. She's helped raise her mother a little bit, you know, and and yeah, and, and, and put salve on the on Lorelai's childhood trauma, right? Um, so yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I agree with that. That's Thank great. You. Thank, Thank you, you all so much. Thank you. Give a big hand to Scott Patterson and Ronnie Truesdale, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, this is Maisie richardson Sellers, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be a legend and hit that like button, and most importantly, have fun and follow your fandom.